Welcome to Marriott MBA Today. I'm Bryce Reynolds Bach, and I'm joined today by Professor Ron Worsham. We're doing a special, this is part of our personal finance series, and today we're looking to learn a little bit more about tax, and we've brought in a little tax expert in the business school. Well, glad to have you here. It's good to be here. So, kind of one of the big things, um, so students, so I mean, we're MBAs, we're in here looking to make more money, looking to figure out things. What was, what would be, Starting off, what would be that big thing for MBAs? What's your big advice for an MBA and their taxes? My big advice would be that taxes matter. Taxes probably would be one of the largest single expenses that you folks will have once you leave school, and it's worth paying attention to. There's a lot in the news going on about taxes these days, and along with all the other things that you guys need to pay attention to, that's one of the other things. Yeah, I know we got, I mean, we're hearing about it, that there's you know, who pays taxes, being part of whatever percent, so certainly it's important. Lots of political discussion going on these days with the election. And uh, again, it, taxes matter and, and how the tax law is written will have an impact on you. So where should we be going then for our tax help? I mean, should I do it by myself or how do I know when I need to go to a professional? Well, before you think about going to a professional, uh, it just, I think, helps to have a certain amount of tax awareness. I know you guys read the Wall Street Journal and Financial Times and, and publications like that. They actually have tax columns on a re regular basis there. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of keep aware of what's coming and what might have an impact and might affect you. That's the, sort of the first step. When it comes time to doing your tax return, you got to think about whether or not you're going to prepare your own or whether you're going to hire professional help. There's a lot of good resources out there for doing it on your own. Um, TurboTax is a wonderful tool fairly inexpensive and will save you a lot of pain. And I even do my own tax return on TurboTax. Yeah. At some point though, as your uh, affairs become more complicated, you need to think about maybe getting some help, perhaps an H&R Block or an equivalent, or maybe even a CPA firm, depending upon the complexity of your situation. So, I mean, certainly there's kind of when we get more assets, that's where we're probably Kind of start to That's when you begin to, to cross the line and think about hiring somebody. Just like you probably wouldn't fix your own car if it got to be very complicated, mm -hmm. you'd hire a mechanic, the same rule would apply when it comes to your tax situation. Okay. So, so some of the other things that might come up for students, I mean, I know a lot of students, we're, we have student loans. Is there anything special about taxes when it comes to our student loans? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. When you graduate, you're allowed to deduct up to $2,500 uh, as a deduction, and it's a special kind of deduction. It's what's called a 4-AGI deduction, which means you don't have to itemize to get the benefit of the deduction, and it's $2,500 a year uh, for an unlimited amount of time. Now, the, the tax law, as it's written, is slated to end at the end of 2012, and it may be that that rule gets changed if it does get changed, it may be taken away or limited for some certain number of years after you graduate. But for now, it's for an unlimited number of years after you graduate for a maximum amount of $2,500, which is nice. Right. I mean, certainly we want to pay off our student loans as soon as we can and not have that burden, but we do have a benefit that we can deduct our student interest. That's right. It helps to ease the, the pain a little bit. Okay. So um, that also brings us into another topic. Um, I know there's tax implications if we wanted to buy a home. Is it similar to our student interest? S certainly. Um, owning a home is one of the most tax advantageous things you can do right now. There are several different provisions in the tax law that make it beneficial to own a home. One is the, the, the mortgage interest deduction. And the way that works is if you itemize, you're allowed to deduct up to a certain amount of mortgage interest deduction every year depending upon the size of your mortgage. But for most MBA students, after they initially graduate, there shouldn't be a limit. Uh, but again, the key issue is whether or not you itemize. As long as you itemize, you'll get that benefit. You'll also be able to deduct any property taxes that you pay on your home. One other one that many people haven't enjoyed lately is the exclusion of up to half a million dollars of gain when you sell your house. Most homes haven't appreciated much lately, but assuming that the real, real estate market improves, Going forward, uh, the benefit is you can sell a house as long as you've lived in it and owned it for at least two years and exclude up to a half a million dollars of the gain from your tax, which is great. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, we hear about it. You're underwater, meaning you owe more on your house than it's worth. But hopefully if we buy a house now, we stay in it long enough, 
we hope to see some change and then we can take advantage of these tax laws. Right, and, and I would also caution your viewers though to stay tuned because uh, the mortgage interest deduction is one of those deductions that uh, gets a lot of press and there's been some discussion in Washington DC about limiting that going forward, so we'll see what happens. Hmm. Okay, so again, just for our viewers is kind of keep track of what's going on in the market. So probably our la my last question is probably something similar is, uh, so on my taxes, I'm filling them out, and I always get this question about my internet purchases. What, why are they asking me about my internet purchases? Well, you probably have noticed that most of the time when you buy something on the internet, you don't pay any sales tax, and historically that's been one of the great incentives for buying something online versus in a bricks and mortar store. The reason those companies don't have to pay or withhold sales tax from you is they don't have a presence in your state. Okay. And so as long as that's true, they don't have to withhold sales tax and it's a benefit to you. But what most people don't understand is that when you make internet purchases and you don't pay sales tax, you're responsible for what's called a use tax. Mm -hmm. And that's what your, your question relates to. The reason the state wants to know what your inter internet purchases were is they want to have you pay use tax or the amount of sales tax you would have paid if you had bought that same item or those same goods in a local store. Okay. So, so really it's my responsibility to keep track of what I buy online, if I, whether or not I pay interest on it. Um, it certainly seems like a lot of work, hard to do. Is, are there, is that gonna change? I mean, it, I know it's my responsibility and, and that's what I need to do. Is that something else that could change though? Um, the, the trend is uh, in the direction of having more and more online retailers withhold sales tax. Amazon would be sort of the example. Um, they've decided to put warehouses all over the country now, and as they've begun to do that, they're required now to collect sales tax on a lot more of their sales. And so I, I think they are sort of in the vanguard of that, of that trend. Yeah, and I remember they, reading a, an article between California and Amazon and the big fight going on for a while. So. So I guess we'll, we'll continue to see that so, so, switch. So I think that trend will continue and more and more of your purchases, unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon your point of view, you'll end up paying sales tax there and won't have to worry about paying the use tax through your own tax filings. All right. Well, we appreciate Professor Warsham coming to join us today to share some, of, some insights on some tax implications for us as MBAs. And we appreciate you watching and uh, watch our next episode.